<laughs> Everyone, please leave. You know, I'm, I'm not a very uh, shallow person, uh, but uh, Michelle always... No, you are. Lo- no, no. She <laughs> always looks amazing. Hi, hello, and welcome to another brand spanking new episode of Another Bachelor Podcast. My name is Dylan, and I'm saddled up next to one real Nicholas Davis. What's going on, everybody? Pat, producer of the podcast, is over there behind my glasses. Hi, everybody. How just, you doing? Just took an edible, huh? Yeah, I took a bite off one. This is exciting. Yes, I'm not going to kowtow to both of you pressuring me to take a, an unknown drug that I haven't taken before. Well, you just did. Well, I took a bite of it. You wanted me to eat the whole damn thing. Well, no, you. I wanted you to take half, and Nick said, w- when you protested and you left the room, Nick said, just trick him into taking half, hmm. and that's exactly what I did, and you took the desired dose. You're going to feel great. Oh, no. Yeah, you're going to feel great. Is that what you two concocted while I wasn't in the room? Even the double that we lied about, these are these are infant doses. Ha ha. Well, I only took half. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I knew oh. I couldn't trust either of you. <laughs> oh, no. Egg on my face. You got to eat the whole thing, dude. Don't I got to be... co-parent in four hours. I dude, feel... dude, stop talking about co-parenting. Don't use that word. Hmm. It's just... A little bit of pot. You can co-parent. That was uh, on a little pot. Yeah, but last week he was out, out all late, drinking all night. He's, I got yelled at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but that was Eat exa- the fucking chocolate. Pack. That was exactly like the scene in Princess Bride when they the yeah, yeah. died again, and yeah. they say, "No, I did it because you did it. Good, good job, everyone. <laughs> good job. Everybody. We don't right. trust each other." Uh, so <laughs> let's get into this episode of The Bachelor. But before, God help me, excuse me. But before we do. Any public service announcements? Yeah, uh, I want to get uh, more traction on that. Another podcast show on YouTube. Right. So get over there and just subscribe. I don't even care if you don't watch. I'd prefer if you did because you get to see our pretty faces entertain you. Oh. But, uh, well, me. Uh, but uh, Yeah, and check out our, our talk of uh, how we need to get hotter in order to take over the media landscape. We need younger people to listen to us. Yeah, so me and Nick have to get hotter. I have this psoriasis thing on my face right now. It's all pink underneath my nose. I can't get rid of it. So anyways, go to patreon.com slash another podcast network. Go to the YouTube. Watch us do it all. Help help, help out the cause. Yeah, exactly. I'm and, already doing my part down nine pounds. Yeah, good for you. You ate an avocado that, yesterday. That's all you ate? Uh, that was two, uh, two days in a row. I only had an avocado. Yesterday I had some meatballs. Uh, okay. Okay, let's not do this and let's get Mm. into the show. Um, First up is a segment called General Thoughts. For those uninitiated, it's kind of where we speak about the episode in general terms. Nick, why don't you let Pat go first? Okay. We're halfway through our journey with Michelle, and I still don't care. Um, I will say it wasn't the worst episode I'd seen, but I will say this was an episode where I feel like I'm getting to know Michelle a little bit more. And the more I do, the more I know she's a pain in the ass. Oh. Yeah, I think she's a a pretty big pain in the ass. Oh, okay. She complains a lot. How very Marvin of you to kick the episode off, (laughs) chauvinist. (laughs) I'm not a chauvinist. Uh, Okay. I just, uh, when that guy, that meathead with the, uh, I guess we call him uh, Frosty Tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he started getting, uh, digging that hole. You're not going to get ahead of yourself, are you, right now? No, no, no. Okay. Oh, okay. So I thought it was a decent episode, but I still don't care. And for any of you leaving me one-star reviews saying, hey, grumpy old man, you don't even like the show anymore, so I'm going to go somewhere else, go somewhere else. (laughs) Nick. Uh, Oh. Pots. Four. I love this strategy because the meaner we are to the the fan base, it only galvanizes the people that decide to stick around, and they will the one, be the ones that pay us when we put the show behind a paywall. And Stockholm syndrome to the people who hate us, because uh, you are going through Stockholm syndrome when Pat berates you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, this this episode brought back just a flooding of emotions. As you guys know, I spent eight yeah. years in Minneapolis. Uh, yeah. Mixed emotions because it looks so beautiful. But if you go there, especially after dark, it is unsafe. It is not what they it appeared. And can I say something? Yeah. Doesn't look that beautiful. Oh, looks, I thought it looked pretty. Looks like a little big town. Uh, there's some of the aerial shots of like the, the bridge and, and then the new stadium. Uh, How about that lake? It's like idyllic. The, pure, the, pure the bridge and the football stadium? Is the, that what you said? Those were the exhibits of its I would movie. have to show you the okay. aerial shots. Again no, I'm day. sure it's got its... But it, but it's not as pretty as it, it looks. When I go back there, I'm like, oh, this is why I left. But yeah. other than that, it was like, okay, episode. Man, uh, we had we had Chris the dweeb going full Marky Mark. Yeah, 
Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I enjoy it. I don't want to get it myself. 72 knots. Yeah, I'm going to go with around 72 knots as well. You know, oddly enough, this was pretty paint by numbers, Bachelorette, and I kind of liked it. I actually did like this episode a lot. Uh, we're starting to lose a little bit of uh, love ambiguity, which I kind of liked that I wasn't really sure who she was kind of feeling. And then this episode, just on a dime, we've got the top two, top four cut and dry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't um, think Rodney's going anywhere. Uh, I mean, poor, by that I mean poor Rodney. My, to her hometown. He, my favorite, my favorite person. On Call him Butterball. Show. Hey, by the way, I I'm think, not going to I because think, he's my fave. Oh, and the most relatable. I could probably have a beer with him. Oh, he's Rodney. amazing. Hey, I think I'm starting to feel that thing. Impossibility. Eat the rest. <laughs> so we bid the former insane asylum in the desert a Jew, and we are going to the paradise that is Minneapolis. The guys are so excited that they're walking on their hands. Mm. Just one of them. Probably Martin. Bad joke. So um, we get some beautiful shots of Minneapolis. Thank you. Um, what, I guess this note came too early. I had no idea that you were going to talk about Minneapolis at the top of the show the way you did, but I should have expected that. But uh, my note here is, what's the haps with this little big town? Throw an egg. <laughs> uh, it's uh, a dilapidated shithole. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that is uh, a microcosm of the split of our nation. Okay, hey, beautiful. Hey, hey. Um, you know what? At the top of the show, uh, when I was asked about my general thoughts and I said that Michelle was a pain in the ass. Yeah. And then you you kind of shaped it that I was a misogynist because I, I didn't like her for certain aspects. Of no, her chauvinist. Character. Right. But it has nothing to do with that. Case in point, the reason why I don't like Michelle is uh, during the first two minutes of the episode, she did something I despise, which is she referred to herself in third person. It's a true bellwether of a narcissist. She said, and I quote, there's been so many phases in of my life who have shaped me and who Michelle Young is. Drink your own juice much? I would argue that that's one of the rare uh, contextual examples where you can speak in the third person. Hmm. Nick, weigh in. Gavel, uh, gavel. I've just definitely heard Pat say, little Patty over here. <laughs> <to think." laughs> yeah, and I don't want to be... I don't want to be cantankerous with you and I don't want it to come across as, mm. as though I'm playing devil's advocate for the entire episode because I'm not. Eat the rest of the chocolate. I'm starting to feel high right now. You're not. I'm telling you, I haven't eaten it anything. It's a placebo, Patrick. Liars. <laughs> hey, and I want to say this. If you want to become a little patty, head on over to that patreon.com slash another podcast network yeah. and subscribe to the $10 tier where you get to hear my show where these two don't get to talk that much right. and all my fans are called the little patty. So right, if right, you want right, to become right. a little patty, head over there. Go to patreon.com slash another podcast podcast network so we sit down with michelle and her extremely dependable sweet parents um because of those qualities we've said before they are boring as fuck um they're also her emotional backbone which is a little telling too what what do you mean well she cries to mommy and daddy every time uh, life gets a little hard yeah i guess is is that a red flag people who are that close to their parents oh my god my ex-girlfriend ashley who I found out does a podcast now, which I will not share because I know all of you will go listen to it. Okay. Uh, but uh, her and her mother, they uh, call each other three times a day. Her okay. mother was called the Deb. She hated me. Uh, she also... Uh, ins- was she called the Deb or did you call her the Deb? I called her the Deb behind her back. <laughs> she, she... I've told this story before the Deb. on another podcast, I'm sure. But I'm dating this girl for eight months and we had sexual relations. Her mother knew that. Her mother called me personally and said, uh, I know you're trying to help Ashley find an apartment which i said i'd help pay for a little bit because we were dating and she wasn't making that much money her mother said no you uh uh she said you broke the seal or something so uh you own it or something like that and she's gonna live with you i said no she's not she said if she doesn't get to live with you then i'm gonna insist that she never talk to you again okay. that was dealing with the deb okay that well, was dependency a daughter and a parent sure i don't think it's directly, i think i'm high right now i don't think it's directly analogous to to this lovely couple <laughs> but anyways let's move on so the guys are running around they're so excited they are screaming at inanimate things can you imagine <laughs> being in this group the producer tells you to go yell at bodies of water You're like what you I'm know not doing that you know who's not screaming <laughs> screaming <laughs> <laughs> no personality joe he <laughs> says and i quote in the most monotone way he says where in Minnesota, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's a fucking stick in the mud. Yeah, he is, but so unbelievably hot. We'll get to him plenty tonight. So, 
Um, Michelle greets the guys for a debrief, uh, which sounds a little something like this. Everyone go away, except for you, Joe. <laughs> Everyone please leave. You know, I'm, I'm not a very uh, shallow person, uh, but uh, Michelle always- No, you are. Lo- no, no. She <laughs> always looks amazing. Uh, but my very, very mean-spirited wife, Cherie, commented uh, when seeing Michelle's teeth, she said, looks like the parents uh, chose the swimming pool over braces. Okay, so- um, <laughs> That's not coming from me. That's coming from Cherie. Pat? If only this my this is a thin veil of protection. If only my grandma would have had that choice, I would have loved a swimming pool and still had fucked up teeth. But <laughs> right. Instead, I had neither. Above or ground? I have one. Would and, you have taken above ground? Uh, no. no. Uh, fucking, All right. Can so, you believe Rodney's still fucking here? Well, so I want to. <laughs> I want to talk about this. If I am any of the other guys, given the context that they're both from this city, they both play basketball, uh, they're both hot. You know, her pulling him in her hometown. Leave the show. Mm-hmm. Leave. You know, maybe not if you're Nate. Maybe not if you're uh, a racer head. Although, maybe if you're a racer head still. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's Nate and Joe, and it's really just Michelle and Joe. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. Um, all right. So. And I don't even think it's Nate because he sucks at basketball, and he's 6'7". Yeah. I mean, it's not. It's not Nate, but Nate still shouldn't leave the show because Joe could bore her to death. And then, you know, Nate, Nate is a fun guy. Uh, we'll, we'll get to him with the two friends. He does masterfully well with them. I agree. Um, anyways, while the guys freak out about the, you know, the fact that they're going to lose the competition, um, Michelle and Joe go to the Minnesota Twin Stadium to... Well, did you announce that the big surprise for the date, day date was that she was just going to be taking no personality Joe? Yeah, I, he did say that. Oh, he did say that. that. He told the high. high. I'm high. And he said, great. <laughs> he was, he that was, eat the rest? No way, dude. I'm already feeling it. I don't know where this show is going. Go off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. Buckle up. So, uh, Michelle and Joe throw out the first pitch. A really creepy announcer presides over this. Uh, rules are strike, kiss. That stadium could have partially caved in and he still would have called a strike i mean this guy just wanted to see these two kids because her pitch was head high and outside Hmm. it was never a strike this is why we need to start implementing the robots i don't care about the purity of the game there should be a definitive strike zone i don't care who you are oh my gosh it's it's bullshit and it's ruining the game yeah watching postseason baseball it's like one of the most frustrating things about it can i say something about this scene is this at the twins stadium Boy, they every sp- pitch matters so much. You know, how can you fuck a call? You up were like focused that? on that. I was focused on how just f- flippant it was as a as a date, and then they just left. They were there. F- this would be like a big life experience for any other person. I actually thought that too. Like that's actually pretty Great cool point. that they got to go through the first pitch out of a bo- baseball game. It was like thirty seconds. Yeah, probably because that creep announcer. Creep announcer. Mm. But uh, the majority of the date is actually spent on the second part of the day date, which is them going to her high school, and this is. I, this was kind of weirding me out a little bit. There's this weird moment where they stand by her locker and she's like, this is my locker. And I'm just thinking like, okay, is it empty or does it have another child's stuff in it? Like, I, I, you have to have a bigger heart than I do to enjoy this kind of date because I'm a little biased, I guess. I didn't have the best time in high school. I didn't have the worst time in high school, but I am a little leery of people who are like really attached to their high school i would have been so uncomfortable i would have been all jokey i would have said gee i wish chris was here so i could throw him into it <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's a stoned bully right now <laughs> i i know she i know she was good at basketball and stuff but wasn't she an uggo who hated high school too like why was she so happy to be back no, here i don't think it's, she's it, ever been an it uggo. feels like a good portion of how she defines herself was her high school's uh, being yeah her. which mm-hmm. is so chuggy Mm-hmm. And uh, sounds like you don't like her either. <laughs> uh, I want to like her. I want to be the, the good guy, but she's she's uh, she's not what I thought she was. I still like her. I love basketball. I'll yeah. mar- marry me. But uh, uh, okay, so <laughs> uh, kisses, and we go back to the house. Um, briefly, Nate got a knife in his back, so he has to heal this week. Um, I guess little guy. Excuse me, Marky Mark Smalls is kind of starting to get pretty heated up. Call him guy who got thrown against a locker in an 80s movie. <laughs> okay. That's a long name, Pat. He Wait was, till the hashtag happens. <laughs> he was it's getting heated name. up. He, he, he somehow feels mistreated by Michelle, 
because he told her information and she didn't do anything with it. And then yeah. he said, without an ounce of irony, this little, little man said, <laughs> I got the short end of the stick. Yeah. <laughs> Have some yeah. self-awareness, you dweeb. You can't say that, dweeb. Night date. Night date! More yummy, yummy pain from ABC's The Bachelorette. Ball was life and life was taken away. All joking aside, this was a very, very sad story. Um, my sister has been some, through something similar, recruited for soccer, tore her ACL, rehabbed, first came back, tore it again. These are sad things that happen to people who have you know, aspirations in athletics. But I will say, um, Pat hates this line, everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I think that he will have 500,000 followers on IG now. Mm -hmm. He will have been spared from probably at best a journeyman uh, career in the NBA that ends uh, you know, in some town in Romania. He in sells real Euro estate. League. Well, I think it's probably, I don't know, people in the NBA make a lot of fucking money even though they're journeymen, so I don't know. But mm. I think he's doing fine. Yeah, I think he also has a girlfriend. Okay. That's I, what the wife told me last night. Okay. I, I do want to delineate between Joe and your sister, who I'm sure mm -hmm. was a fantastic soccer player, right. but she had no lucrative co career path laid out before her, just maybe free college. So wildly, di wildly different. Good point, yeah. But we should all be so lucky to have such passion for something that we care about that we kill ourselves or think about killing ourselves if it gets taken away. I actually yeah, thought yeah, yeah. I actually thought that this was dope how much you love basketball. Yeah, yeah, well you love basketball, so calm down, but also this was the kind of like it's appropriate yummy yummy pain. I I've talked about this throughout the entire season. I guess this is now a norm for this show, so now we have, you know, a rubric for this. Don't talk about your brother getting run over by a Mack truck. Talk about, you know... You want to take yourself out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, talk about suicide and, and ball. Well, I used to say when I was trying to be a musician and, you know, how that all resolves, I made... Uh, after 10 years, Negative I made $27,000. 20, 20, yeah. Exactly. But I had said, if I don't make it on MTV by the time I'm 30, I'm going to yeah. off myself. I turned 30, I was like, I guess I'll clean aquariums. Right. <laughs> right. It's good to put those like uh, harsh timelines on, but I mean, you got to follow through, Pat. Right. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, think about it. You could be playing at the Troubadour tonight to 50 people. Discipline equals freedom. Off okay. yourself. So, um, hey, can now, I do a cutback? No. Okay. That's a new thing. So, Joe didn't quite go to Dr. Death, but it sounds like he went to somebody who was trying to kill his foot, you know, mm -hmm. like he put the wrong screw in. Um, yes, you can do a cutback. Okay. Oh, oh, now that's, to, that's such bad. While well, they're having say. this conversation. Yeah. Meanwhile, druggy Rick thinks Nate is desperate for Michelle time. I think it's the scurvy druggy Rick had, and that's <laughs> giving him all those stupid thoughts. Shout out to the baby birdie that's a medical student. Right. And she told me, because I've been calling him druggy Rick. He does look sickly. Perhaps he caught it from LT. Yeah, they call him sick, right? Uh, but, but she said it's scurvy. Yeah. Druggy Rick has scurvy. No, yeah. we called it scurvy, and she used our calling it scurvy to remember what scurvy was which is a vitamin d oh. deficiency deficiency are you that, high that, yes that, that makes <laughs> that makes you look sickly uh so you're welcome i love that we could be a part of your education um so uh joe and her kiss he gets the rose he's hot uh let's you know let's go rub one another on the ferris wheel mm -hmm. uh again i'll say this is over um she says you know the date was like or their relationship is like two souls meant to be together living alongside one another but never meeting mm -hmm. it's done yeah. it is done she this is she wants this to be her high school dream her teenage dream this is her yes. boyfriend in high school oh they, i like that that's a hot take it's yeah. love and basketball it's yeah, love yeah, and basketball yeah, yeah. he's her omar epps um all right who's so, the girl in that i no one knows oh. i was gonna say it but i, I have no idea hmm. so um let's get to the day date you want to get to the group card date? Yes, please. Did Here's Joe, what's going on. Did Joe wear eyeliner? I keep seeing weird shit. Sh no, sick Rick out. does. All right, sorry. Druggy Rick. Who's going yeah. on the group date? Group date. Here's who's going on the group date card. Butterball, Casey, uh, wife's a fan of him. Uh, Urkel, Frosty Tips, Druggy Rick, who also has scurvy. Boring Clayton, Olu, who, uh, who are you looking at, eyes? <clears throat> and the guy who gets uh, pushed against a locker in an 80s movie or slash uh, house rat uh, s sni uh, stitches gets uh, stitch snitches get stitches <laughs> okay so so here come my pots right um who are you looking at guy is probably the one you're pondering the most well <laughs> well that's a good one you so let's let's be real about it you uh ruptured your achilles on the uh stick on the landing right 
Yeah. But but the biggest don't kill yourself. The biggest problem, <laughs> the biggest problem was that you called him Casey. When we have a name for him, it's the best nickname in the Dak season. Shepherd. Old Dak, Dak Shepard. And I know nicknaming is your lane. You're the best at it. But you you haven't come close to Old <laughs> Dak Shepard. And you, you willingly left out the nickname. For but when Pot. I say who you're looking at, Eyes, uh, we all know who I'm talking about. That's great. Yeah, that's why you do it. So everybody knows who we're talking about. Uh, you mentioned that your wife is a fan of old Dak Shepard. Does she like Dak Shepard? Does she listen to No, she doesn't like Dak, the real Dak Shepard. Well, she likes a little gray in, so, mm-hmm. in the tips. You know what I mean? Got it, got it, got He's it. He's just a go- cool guy. He seems like a fun hang. Yeah, I'm he, sure does, expert. he does great, sound great like, a, like a great hang. So uh, we are at another stadium. Are they at the Minnesota stadium? Yeah, this is... Uh, the plagued uh, Viking stadium? Yes. Um, all right, so old guys. Um, U.S. Bank Stadium. Uh, big, big old guys who dress like Vikings for a living um, run out onto the field. They were very silly, and they were very intense. Uh, they make the guys scream and throw logs, and then they ask them to change into their costumes for a little meal. Uh, anything before we get to this gauntlet of disgusting food? Just that. I may be like mixing up like free mascot stories, but I'm, I think one of these guys... There's this guy for Vikings games who would dress as a Viking and he'd drive out on a motorcycle and he just did it for free. He brought his own motorcycle. Mm. Yeah. And then he tried to hold out. He wanted like $200,000 a year and they're like, no. Right. And they moved on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I was going to say, we'll move on. Yeah. Yeah, it'll uh, be fun. Hey, uh, one thing. Uh, while those guys were dressing up in the Vikings uh, fair or whatever, uh, Michelle looked very hot here. She was wearing the uh, the leather pants from Sandy from uh, the la- final scene in uh, Greece. Greece, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The scene where she... Uh, decides that she wants to be a kind of edgy whore to uh <laughs> to make Jonathan Travolta fall in love with her. She's <laughs> a great great message. Uh-huh. She she's like the, uh, she I'm, took up smoking. Right? I, I'm this I'm this hard working took up smoking. uh dedicated student uh but he still doesn't like me. And also equally as bad for the men, you know, John Travolta's tight, right? He's tight. Mhm. And then all of a sudden he gets on a, a white suit at the end and he's what's supposed to be some some nerd or something. Mm-hmm. He also changes himself, but not really. He's still tight. He's just in a white suit compared to the leather. Uh, go out, uh, watch Grease too if, if you're a fan of Grease. What? Is that Michelle Pfeiffer? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Grease 2 is actually the number two pick in the Grease draft by the Anus Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... Uh, <laughs> That was a tough. That was a tough putt, but they. I think they made the right call. Um, All right, so um, the meal is rotting fish and head cheese. Um, Listeners of Below Deck will know um, and know well that I'm, you know, well versed in a lot of different culinary things. I, I fancy myself an adventurous eater. The fish stuff, I can't fucking do it. The the dried fish, the 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 pickled fish, the fermented fish, it's just, it hits my tongue and it makes me want to cry and throw blood up. Mm. Absolutely disgusting. How would you guys have fared during this? I would have left. I would have said, where's Mike Fleiss? This show sucks. <laughs> hey, uh, did you... Did Thank the, you for that answer. I would have aided him a competitor. Did the yeah. three guys that COVID would have loved to have taken out come out yet? Yeah. Pat. Wait, what? Pat. The, the three Are guys... You, did you eat the rest? I didn't hear no. what he said. I, am I high too? Yeah, no. I said that the the three guys who dress like Vikings yeah. for a living. Oh, oh. okay. Um, all right. So, anything before the night date? And that's when I told that anecdote about the Vikings mascot. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I just want to say this is uh, hor- all this is really bad producing, and it's been uh, pretty consistent for Mike Fleiss. I think this. that it's it's good producing for. The standards of this show that we've come to to know and love so much. Well, you know? th- this is such this isn't as bad as they as low as they can go. Uh, I think it is because they're basically just like, hey, we hired uh, uh, this producer that used to work on F- uh, Fear Factor, and that's who designed the state. This was Fear Factor. Well, and let me say this about the group dates too. There's a there's an issue I think with. The stakes are so fucking low. The winner of the group date, there's really no motivational incentive to win these things whatsoever. You know, uh, if you win, you can still not get the rose mm-hmm. and or very likely be eliminated that or the next episode. You I'd know? rather be back at the house pounding claws in my own thoughts. Of course you would, right? Mm-hmm. You do have a chance sometimes to win a $4,000 olive green uh, leather bomber jacket that will be destroyed and you won't tell on anybody out of some sort of 
moral compass yes. uh, following. And, and then you'll be forgotten. You fucking idiot. I can't. Someone needs to tell Michelle and ruin her night. Like, hey, a couple weeks ago, yeah. uh, that one weird guy you threw sent home he threw the other weird guy's jacket yeah, that you sent home and the weird guy who you sent home was actually a really good guy maybe give it to marvin have marvin go tell her about will's character is this true no cocktail party uh all right it's so martin is it yeah <clears throat> clayton has been selected to um you know arbitrary viking king um and because of this victory he goes first i guess that's his prize um, Clayton and her talk. I, they make I, out. I'm blown away that this guy is evidently the bachelor. We've seen almost nothing of him. I think he'll slowly work his way into hometowns. Um, oh, yeah. It'll be Clayton, Brandon, Nate, and Joe. Oh, you just shored it up. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. That makes sense to me. And it's, I don't know, like, bachelor was taking this, day, like, we had our first black bachelor, uh, black bachelorette but now it's like they went the complete other way with this corn fed giant clayton as oh, the right, bachelor right. They're, they're no they're like oh this isn't working right retreat retreat which shows you how dumb these people are it's mm -hmm. like let's let's go with uh i mean it's not dumb to to put you know um to represent uh the black community on the show but it is dumb to have a guy we never met before to go friends from, with a former cast member. well there's that but then all definitely that but then also diversity representation and then like you said boomerang back so far the other side i mean this is the co most corn-fed white human being you can find i will say the i will say this it's not the show will be more successful with clayton but it's not because of his color or because of any of that it's going to be it's because it's the bachelor mm -hmm. right True, right. uh, but a damning indictment. And there's going to be uh, some people like our, our very own Patty Melt who were come back after boycotting the show when Chris Harrison was kicked off. They're sure. like, "Oh, Clayton, he's a strapping young white man." Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm back. Um, uh, I do want to mention some of the things from the Viking contest. I didn't know where we were, so that's yeah. why I didn't mention them. Just how sickly Rick looked during his scream. Oh yeah, that seemed like an absolute scream. Oh of pain my god, yeah. That like that that was the pain he always feels because he's dying of scurvy. It was the the. <laughs> The kind of scream that you would scream had you been on a deserted island for two and a half weeks and you finally killed like an iguana or <laughs> something like that. And that's what he looks like. He's just got clothes on. I went back and looked at the footage of the last couple of episodes. He was uh, po uh, cozying up to LT quite a bit before LT's exit. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. And LT was the sickest amongst everybody. Oh, yes. I mean, he looked like he was... I've been told he, he died a few days after filming, yeah, actually. Thank very, God he left before sad. turning the entire cast into zombies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super sad. But Resident Evil type shit. And then also with the screams, this was the first inkling we got that production just really hates the little dweeb just as much as we do. Mm -hmm. They even had the Viking make fun of his little dweeby, <laughs> right. dweeby yell. Right, 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 uh, right. And then um, because you know I love the results of some of these competitions in the arm wrestling Olu beat Chris the Dweeb. Uh, Clayton beat Martin in a probably like those are those two guys are both very fit. That was a that was a barn burner. And Rodney beat Brendan in the two guys who <clears throat> don't have a chance. Right, right, right. Brendan's okay. So is Rodney. I love Butterball. I like Rodney. He doesn't have a chance. No, he does not. So, um, back to the group date. Back to the group date. Speaking of Smalls, Smalls has a meltdown. Um, he the snitch. Yeah, he gets flamed by Olu. Um, I think the line was like, you know, they dressed you in a horse costume because that's what you are or something like that. Second inkling that the production hates the little dweeb just as much as we do. Uh, um, then he lashes out at Nate again and then walks around in a confident panic waiting for her to come talk to him. Hmm. That's what's confusing about uh, his breed of insane. He's extremely confident in his position, but he's also... Um, uh, having a panic attack because he knows that he has no confidence in this uh, competition, but, but clings very, very strongly to the idea that she needs to come and speak to me. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't work. Um, mm -hmm. Not only does she oh. not come and talk oh. to him, she forgets that he exists for a brief moment. I mean, she sits down on the couch. She's like, all right, so we are, Oh my God. Who is that? Oh, that's right. Well, actually, she said uh, when she saw him, she didn't recognize him. She said, were you in an 80s movie where you got thrown <laughs> against a locker? Guys, who is this? <laughs> and then she goes, well, I'm going to uh, end, end the night right now. And he audibly went, wow. Oh. <laughs> 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 he says the audacity 
after Clayton gets the uh, the rose, he says, uh, Small says, the audacity, I'm so goofy, and you didn't even check on me when you saw how my goofy had gone. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the day date. Day date. And um, uh, well, you forgot to mention, because I would have done a, a meanwhile, uh, no personality Joe uh, reads the date card and it appears he's going to be overjoyed that Nate will be going on the one on one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. He's got the day off. He doesn't have to play pretend anymore. Um, all right. So, Minnesota, land of a thousand lakes. Is it a thousand or ten thousand? Ten thousand, but it's actually wildly underrepresented. There are hundreds of thousands of lakes in both Wisconsin and Minnesota, and many people say Wisconsin has more lakes than Minnesota, but many are man-made, so it's hard to decipher and get well. A real and count. what what c- constitutes a lake versus a pond? Well, yeah, I I guarantee you there are so many ponds that are getting counted as lakes. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely, yeah. no no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Hey, uh, are you guys uh, uh, fans of the film Purple Rain starring Prince and Apollonia? Purple Apollonium? Rain? You know, I, like I thought I was gonna point this out to you guys, uh, but of course, it's this is right in your wheel. Resident Take it away, Patty. Patty. Uh, I have never, I like Prince a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, his, his discography is very intimidating to me. I, I really don't know where to start. Oh, get high. I wasn't high in 2016 when he rolled sevens. Right. It was April, I want to say, and I heard he died at 10 o'clock at night, and I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put those earbuds in. I'm going to start with his first record, and I'm going to go all the way through. Big Prince guy. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, actually, I would say that when I was a kid, but then he made a lot of, like, a decades of horrible music. Was it's, was the kind of, like, disco-y Bam, bam, bam. That kind of prince is that the bad seventy eight to eighty five was his best period, and then he had a little blip in non with diamonds and pearls record in nineteen eighty nine or nineteen ninety, and then fell off a fucking cliff. I love studying someone's discography like that. I read the Keith Richards biography, and I read the Stones as I went oh, along with the book, and it was it was so awesome. They have like forty records. It was it, it was like eight months. That's a tough discography to get into. The Beatles is actually not. pretty welcoming. The Beatles. Oh, it's is, so easy. Every album is is pretty much phenomenal. And it's thirty four minutes. The first three Rolling Stones. It's easy to get into. There's well, just they so have a many. lot of records, and we're getting too in the weeds about this. But another right. one who's really tough to get into, Elton John. That guy's put out hundred fifty fucking records. His fun period is the late seventies with with the disco stuff. That infusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen yeah. to some of those records. Good records. Oh yeah. All right. So Purple Rain. And okay. I apologize to the audience. So Lake Minnetonka. Which looks lovely. Yeah. Uh, it didn't look like that in the film in uh, 1984 in Purple Rain. This new version of Lake Minnetonka has been gentrified. It has a bunch of different houses and stuff sure. like that. In the film uh, where he show, Prince shows Apollonia uh, Lake Minnetonka, it looks like where you uh, dispose of the body you just killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look out. There's a needle there. Hey, mm-hmm. um, what's the plot of... Sorry to digress, but I, it's the... Bat- Very thin plot. Okay. Uh, Prince uh, uh, it's plays a at a club, Prince project. and uh, and then there's a bunch of bands trying to get uh, time, stage time. Okay. And then a just a love romance comes up because Apollonia wants to hit the stage, and then there's a fellow artist named Morris Day who wants to make him his uh, her his protege. Got it. Got it. And, but Prince wants to bang her. Right, right, right. And then they just play a bunch of music. It's just a, an excuse to play all the great songs from Purple Rain. Got it. Got it. And so Prince lords uh, sex over her to give her stage time. It's like a Joey Diaz tale. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. yeah. His dad tries to off himself in the movie. I oh, always cool. thought he did kill himself. There is one little blip of Prince seeing him in the hospital with a bandage over his head at the tail end of the film. I don't know if he made it out of there or not. Oh, God. Oh, he shot himself. Then. Yeah, he shot himself. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. And did you know that- He's like, a failed musician. The line- uh, Purify yourselves in the waters of Lake Minnetonka was no. from that movie. I have the I quote even know right what here. That, I had no idea that Prince was, a was line. referred to as the kid in the movie Purple Rain. I never knew that. He doesn't have any other character name except the kid. The kid said, Well, for starters, you have to purify yourself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. Apollonia says, What? The kid says, You have to purify yourself in Lake Minnetonka. You just wanted her to get undressed? Get, he wanted her to get naked. Then yeah, he yeah, fucked yeah. with her. Uh, and then, he, then she did. Wow. I just watched this scene today. I've never seen the movie, but I knew it was from Prince, but I wanted to get more context. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. She, he gets, she gets naked. She's like, fine, I'll do it. She jumps in the water. He goes, that's not Link Minnetonka. And he gets on his motorcycle and he drives, drives away. Off. It's mm-hmm. fucking wild. <laughs> also, he was nagging. <laughs> also, yeah. Morris Day at some point, he's the other, I guess he's kind of the bad guy in the movie. Sorry, wild tangent. I'll wrap it up. Uh, girl's walking down the street and she confronts Morris Day uh, and he's with one of his thug buddies there and he doesn't want to hear this girl what she has to say to him. So he orders his buddy to just throw her in a dumpster. Wow. 
Incredible. 80s. And yeah, I'm going to keep the this. lens we can look back. I'm going to keep this right. tangent going just a little bit longer. Yeah, and uh, then after Nick, I'm we'll high. be done. Uh, yes. Uh, but uh, Dave Chappelle then re immortalized that line sure. in the Prince sketch. Uh, purify yourselves in Lake Minnetonka when the sh- sh- shirts were blouses uh, and Prince is really good at basketball and then he mm-hmm. invites everybody over for pancakes. Yeah. And uh, Dave Chappelle did that because he rev- he wasn't making fun. He loves Prince. He reveres him. He's his favorite artist mm-hmm. of all time. So much so that when after he like went quote unquote crazy, I know you should call people that or whatever, but he left all this millions of dollars on the table and then he came back and he just started popping up places, started touring. Uh, I had bought tickets to Kanye West's Yeezus tour in Minneapolis. He canceled because he's a psychopath because some mm. some uh, choreographed set piece broke on the way there and he canceled. Right, right. But then I got all this money back and Dave Chappelle announced shows at First Avenue where film First Avenue, that's yeah, right. where Prince filmed Purple Rain oh, wow. and he spoke for. Uh, uh, I saw him on the first night, second show, and he was on for like four and a half hours, and we were first row, and he was just like, wow. ta- he was just like talking to me, yeah, uh, yeah. like, and the crowd and stuff, and he's like, hey, someone name a sad movie, and I said Simon Birch, and he goes, god damn, and oh, uh, wow. it was a really, really fun experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he ended up doing eight sold out shows that week, and the last night, he rented out the Target Center, and anybody who bought a ticket this week, I didn't hear about it till the next morning, could go and watch this pickup basketball game. And he served pancakes and he invited Prince, but per- Prince didn't show up. Mm. He did uh, <laughs> his uh, last little stint in Los Angeles was 10 shows, 10 nights in a row at the Staples Center. And the- Are we still oh, talking 25 about bucks a ticket. Dave Chappelle? Sorry, uh, Prince actually. Or Prince, yes, let's and just how indelible he is on Minneapolis. It, it, it all it all means something. It has some association to the mm-hmm. Bachelorette. This show yeah. sucks. All right, hey, so let's talk about Michelle's homely is friend a showing up. Land of a thousand lakes. <laughs> I don't want to be rude, but you guys are talking, and I, I know that I contributed too. But I was just thinking, you know, at various different points of your guys' tales, like who gives a fuck, you know? My story. I ask good. myself that sometimes. My story. Who talk. gives a shit? But my stories are great. And well told. All right, so um, let's Nick, get to the homely friends. Nate, Nikki did a good job. Nate receives some of the worst news you can possibly hear on a date with <laughs> <laughs> with someone. My friends are going to be joining us, and it's not. I'm not trying to say like, oh, great, your friends are here. What are they going to? They're going to pester me about. I'm, it's not like that, but it's just. It kind of is too. Hundred like percent. <laughs> yeah. What what else are they there for? To, but to give you the third fucking degree. So yeah, they're way too intense. I'm I'm the opposite. Especially homely girl number two. I'm Stop. the opposite. The I, audience knows who I'm talking Stop. about. Stop. I'm the opposite though. I actually love these types of interactions, the icebreakers and stuff, and just sure, charming yeah, the yeah. pants off the the people they bring, and that's like when you, you can really like. Uh, cement yourself and get your partner kind of, kind of like when they see you mixing it up. I mean, it's it's in his it's in Pat's book. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you can, uh, okay. So uh, Nate does really really well with uh, both of them. Uh, they press him. There's a cross examination mm. about the rats, about you know tensions in the house. Uh, clearly, the producers told them to go do that. He doesn't name any names, mm. and he explains clearly that he has confidence in he and Michelle's relationships uh, relationship not cockiness i thought he knocked it out of the park he did uh, and as you mentioned it was in fact a cross-examination uh the friend number two uh, had a lot of follow-up questions <laughs> thank you about the rat she uh she said hey was there something you said or might have said to make the guy who looks like he got pushed in a locker in an 80s movie say all that stuff about you good question friend number two <laughs> and like you said nate knocked this out of the park the way he he <laughs> He just he he took ownership of it, but like specifically by saying the exact line, which could come across as bad. Like I said, it's not if but when I'm going to get a one on one date. And the way he explained it, she's like, she kept telling me to be patient. I know what we have together. Yep. I think about her all the time. It was beautiful. A hundred pots. If you know the truth, you ain't got to lie. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mark Twain. You know, I think too many quotes are misattributed to mark twain and also winston churchill yeah and also winston churchill and uh not ladybird eleanor eleanor uh all right so nate and joe are it we've talked about it um i'm a little saddened that the ambiguity of her affection is gone now um because now it's really you know the next three episodes we're gonna look at rick Although Rick could be a fun kind of spiraling downward kind of wing melting oh, yeah. thing <laughs> Uh, that's going to be fun. And he's definitely booked his ticket to Bachelor Paradise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully well, they like he, the drugs he, show up if there. If he makes it, yeah. Um, so, Sun's going to be good for him. 
But yeah, that's what scurvy is, vitamin D deficiency. Um, there are no more twists. Gwen's head is in the box. We've seen it. You know, mm-hmm. Brad's in tears. That's it. Mm-hmm. Curtains. Um, let's get to the night date. Night date! So they speak of a boyfriend who didn't care that she had a gastrointestinal disease because the gastrointestinal disease was him. And, you know, I said there were no more twists left, but oh, my God. Wow. I didn't see that coming. Are you going to get into this or are you just going to say it? No, like go that? ahead. All go right. Ahead. So she had a bad high school boyfriend. What she didn't realize. Was it high school? Was it that young? Oh, uh, maybe it was high school into college. Okay. I don't know. She's only 28. She's yeah, was, on the show two years ago. It was ago. that young. It was Michelle. Okay. Well, who's on first type? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. <laughs> um, so... Uh, she was dating a bad guy, bad relationship. He was emotionally, uh, what do you call that? Uh, abusive. Abusive, yeah. And she didn't realize, she thought she was just uh, having some medical issues. She didn't realize it was him, as you put yeah. it, in a much funnier way. What can but, you imagine being the guy, like going into the doctor's office and the doctor's like, uh, Michelle, we've, um, we've done the blood work and uh, the disease is actually him. And you're like, wait, what? I'm a disease? It's like a crazy twist. Great anthrax record, too, by the way. Hey, um, uh, one thing I want to say about is this. Is that an Michelle, oxymoron? No, uh, anthrax's first uh, record was called I'm the Disease. Um, I was saying good anthrax record. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Funny. When she's saying all this stuff about this, and believe me, been there, sister. We, we all have. Uh, Davin, our first uh, boyfriend or girlfriend uh, within our early 20s or something, uh, emotionally destroyed us. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was talking to my wife about this the other night. The beginning of our our relationship, I cried so much. She was doing that to you? No, I was doing it to me. But also, yeah, she, you know, it wasn't even me. She was doing it to me. Mm -hmm. She was making me so sad. We just made a breakthrough right there. Hey, I want to say this. My first girlfriend who I lost my virginity to and I pledged my love for. And then and she fucked the whole football team? The entire football team. Okay. She didn't leave, leave out anybody. All right. So you <laughs> want to talk about twists? <laughs> yes. It's this. It, uh, speaking of no more twists, I meant to say. I did remember a thing I wanted to say. Uh, and we, we've, we see this on a, a lot on this show. Like emotional abuse is like horrible and unforgivable unfor- in relationships. Yeah. But if anybody saw Zach Stacy go viral over the weekend, physical abuse is often worse. Who's that? <sighs> Let's not. So um, I'll do the breakdown. What do you mean? Oh, well, you said um. Well, well, I say um a lot, and I apologize for that. But um, we're devoid of twists. Um, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> you know what's not surprising at all, which isn't a twist at all? Mickey has captured another family and is hanging them over a fucking canyon somewhere because Smalls is going crazy. Um, he, with his little body, strolls right up to their table, interrupts their one-on-one, and demands that she speak with him. Mm-hmm. Now, Nate has the perfect response to this, and it's the same response he's had pretty much the entire kind of interaction with him. You are so fucking weird. (laughs) Yeah. You are so weird. Now, hold on. Little short guy, Chris, guy who got thrown against a locker in 80s movies, the snitch. His family's hanging over a canyon somewhere. Yeah, He had a reason for this, which I'd back him on this. Yeah, to save his family's life. Well, that and also he said, wait, Michelle proclaimed... (laughs) She wants a guy to show up and right. be there. Right. So I'm going to show up. And I'd say, Chris, she didn't mean you. How foolish of you. She meant no personality Joe or that douchebag with the manicured eyebrows. Yeah, I love Not you. That we have these archetypes every once in a while uh, on this show. There's a, there's a few of them. Oh, he fits solidly in that one. There are there are the guys who take... Comedia Del Mickey. Yeah, Comedia Del Mickey. Um, perfect. <laughs> there are the guys that take the... Uh, empty platitudes too seriously they take them very very literally and um like you said they're not about you and also they mean nothing so Mm -hmm. just just be yourself be yourself and i don't want this to get misconstrued i wanted to make before i say my next point very clear i do think mickey holds some of these contestants families hostage to get them to do their bidding I do not think that's what's happened uh, in this instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like you said, he's this guy that believes all these platitudes and he was getting all fired up. Right. And this is now our seventh or eighth inkling that production hates this little man right. because 
he walked up to him. He's like, I got to do something. They're like, you know what? You should go talk to her. Yeah. You should absolutely go talk to her and tell her how you feel because we think she's into you. She keeps saying, you know I'm what? into little fucking dweebs. That's a good point. Mickey may not have kidnapped his entire family, <laughs> put them in a cage, and hung them over the Grand Canyon. That might not have happened. But I want in this case. Yeah, in only this case. Okay. It happens all the time. Okay, so let's get Too to often. um them talking. So um he pulls Michelle over and he essentially says indignantly, I ratted for you. Mm-hmm. Um also you're fake. What the fuck is going on and when am I gonna get my kiss? You know? And she, you know, um race is broached. I do not need a white man speaking for me. Um and I take her point. I mean, you don't need anybody speaking for you. If you were about to deliver a, a beautiful speech and some weird little white guy stepped in front of you and was like, hang on, I've got this. To be fair, I don't think she brought up color in this context. I think she, she just did. said, I don't need a guy no, speaking I think, for me. I think she did brought she up say color. white guy? I think she. I think it was implied. It doesn't matter. I, I, I think that but she did, though. Regardless, she walks uh, this little man to the escalator, and then she goes back to watch the fireworks with Nate and make out. And I believe Chris in the uh, SUV was looking on Craigslist to see if there's still time to be one of Santa's elves at the mall. Okay. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> we shouldn't be heightest. The, if the, the elf community needs, uh, or a little person community needs to, like, Start creating. Sorry, did you get confused with uh, the two communities? Well, <laughs> el- elves aren't real. They're, they're what? They're a career path for the little people. Okay. Uh, but the little little people need to start getting together and demanding <laughs> that the uh, the holidays that Hallmark creates all have little people. They have a strong lobby. Lobby. We have leprechauns. We have elves. Uh, but why are there no Easter little people? <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. And, and if also, we, I think tall people can be elves too. Cupids, little cupids. Yeah, the, I'm telling you, they have a strong lobby. The the best elves are are you know they're not towering, but they are of normal height. You know, wood elves, dark elves, Christmas elves are the little ones. So, to somehow somehow turkeys just have a stronghold, and they're like, stay away from this one. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, so let's get to the rose ceremony, but first, cockies. Um, her and Rick head out on a date, a uh, little walk around uh, the up and down the block of the hotel they're mm-hmm. at right now. Mm-hmm. And she jokes about his eye contact, and uh, he really doesn't get the note, um, which is stop looking at me so intensely. <laughs> yeah. It's freaking me out. My wife said out loud, ugh. Well, yeah, it's this thing where she's like, wow, you. That eye contact, huh? And he's like, <laughs> always, always, always. It's like, no, she's not trying to build you up. She's telling no, you to she's, please stop. Yeah, it's, it's disturbing. so scary. Look people in the eye less and get out in the sun. You look sickly. <laughs> All right. So Michelle continues to feed uh, Brandon. She's feeding him throughout the entire episode. Swedish fish uh, cake. I mean, it's just bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to make him grow. Yeah. And um, Rodney gives himself a little bit of a pep talk before he goes to speak to her. Um you know, I love Rodney. I've said it way too many times this episode. I think that she is into Rodney too. I think that he has, you know, objectively good qualities in him. Friend zone. It's just that it's the friend zone. It's and like it's making out with your friend. It's just that Joe's too hot. In mm-hmm. a zone. It's a just region. that Joe's too hot and Nate is too tall. Sheree Hickey had a different opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she made out with Butterball, she said she's a monster. Oh, I yeah, said, yeah. why is that, honey? She said, she's not into this guy. She's just uh, dragging him along. I think she likes him, but um, it's part of the you know, occupational hazard. You got to break a couple hearts huh, mm-hmm. to, ma- to make an omelet. Oh, you got to know how it feels, too. Right. Mm-hmm. I like Rodney, but I actually thought his intensity, despite not having a chance anymore, like... This right. was this was like in a in a horror movie when like the killer dies, he finally ends it. But you're like, there's 20 more minutes left. How's Rodney shows up and he was just like, right, right. I'm right. not gonna let her go. Right, right, I'm not right. Gonna, but then he turned out all right. He's cool. Yeah, like no, him. he's oh, yeah. cool. But he mm-hmm. should give up soon. Uh, so speaking of people who should give up, let's Frosty get to tips. Martin Frosty Tips, who continues to just crush on these one-on-one chats. Oh sure, <laughs> it's his bread and butter. Um, last week. We had him saying you shouldn't have sent home daddy because I love daddy. And this week we have girls in Miami expect the man to do everything for them. Um, Girls in Miami are high maintenance. Now, 
I think it had whispers of chauvinism, but he explained what he meant pretty earnestly. Mm. And I think his misstep was saying girls in Miami instead of a lot of the girls that I've dated in Miami. It's been a one way street. I've put more into the relationship Mm. than they have. When you say girls in Miami are so high maintenance, it'll bristle someone, especially when they have a chip in the producers or from the producers going, you gotta gotta say something about that, Michelle. <laughs> gotta get in on that. I was uh, yelling at my TV. Get out of there, Rock! Rock! Get out of there! It's a reference to Rocky Three when he was being pounded by Clubber Lang. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, he's against the ropes. I recall. Who didn't know that? Uh, Some of our listeners. You mentioned. I, I including me. Uh damn it! What'd you just say? Um, uh, sh- uh, whispers of chauvinism explains himself correctly. One way relationships. Oh yeah. It was, I took a sick rip earlier, uh, but I'm going to complete this point. Who is she talking to? Very quickly. It'll bring me back. Frosty tips. Frosty tips. Yes. His Miami comment. He, that was just a thing to kind of flirt with her that he, he didn't have any meaning behind or think there was going to be a second level. Uh, I would argue looking at Michelle Young as a school teacher. Don't I, say that. What do you mean? I oh, think. No, no, no. She, I, she I seemed you, like she would hate high maintenance. She, I think she, I don't care. I wouldn't characterize Michelle as uh, what I think is a high maintenance, even if she did in fact live in Miami. I thought it was stupid small talk on his part. Yeah, yeah that's uh, what I thought you were going to say. Like knowing her, knowing the show you're you're on, knowing the climate, just don't say something flippant like that. He's an idiot. Oh, yeah. he's an idiot. And yeah. he did in Miami when he's talking about those girls. Like he dated thoughts. Like he's yes. he's, he's a personal trainer who does backflips and dates thoughts. Yes. Of and course, the, they're high maintenance. The tattoos, the earrings. They're useless people. Of course, they're high maintenance. Their their jobs are to be taken Sought care of. Sought after. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So we got to be rose. maintained. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have a rose ceremony. Yes, we do. Uh, Pat, why don't you let us know? Oh, first, good to see you, Bristow and Tasha. Bye. Bye. Let's get to the rose ceremony. All right. First, I must point out because Druggy Rick laid it out perfectly. He said uh, Clayton already has a rose. Nate already has a rose. And Joe has a rose. And there are 10 dudes left. So here we go. Here's a roll call for who's staying. Druggy Rick. Uh, who are you looking at, eyes? Number two, pencil head. Number two, frosty tips. Talks too much. Butterball ass. Uh, who goes home? Urkel and Casey. And to all this, I say who gives a shit. Sure. Yeah, so now we're in the doldrums of the season. It We've sucks got now. a couple episodes before we get to the ratcheting up, uh, the good TV. But well, um, we want to see the filthy, yucky normies. What, what do you mean? The family members of, the, of yes, the guys. Yes, of course. That's the best part of the show. We get to go to uh, places and sites unseen. What are you I, talking about? I was, just, I was just looking at the names that are left. I was about to say, like, because I agree with you. We've always talked about this little lull here before hometowns yeah. after the crazies leave i was like there's no villains but we still got martin i bet he's gonna get super weird coming up yeah yeah yeah. i think frosty so tips yeah and we'll continue to marvel at rick and how he's still standing uh so it'll be a lot of fun but hold on you just brought up something that's my problem with the show we just analyzed like almost like we've been uh, uh brainwashed by mickey mouse we're like well obviously what are they gonna do for us now after all this and we're, we're looking over the names <laughs> They're not going to do anything. They never do. Uh, God, <laughs> All promise is lost. They'll do something. But no, they'll keep sh- showing a trailer at the beginning of every episode of something we're going to see at the last episode that won't pan out. Well, it'll be her crying about how she has to break up with a good guy. Mm. Are we uh, Are we going to their home? <laughs> Isn't that sad that you know that? <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the savior we're usually... through the movie. You already know the ending. <laughs> is I mean, people having weird way. families. Yeah. That's why we have to get to So hometown. are they going to these people's hometowns? I think so. COVID's uh, still very dangerous. All right, let's get into uh, the end of the episode. Jump the <laughs> iTunes ratings and reviews. Leave five stars. Go to patreon.com slash another podcast network for more content from us. YouTube, subscribe, hit the bell, and mix it up with all the peoples there. We love you. We'll see you next week. I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Nick, say goodbye. Goodbye. Pat, say goodbye. Bye. Bye.